What's going on, everyone? So yesterday, the Los Angeles Lakers, led by Spencer Dinwiddie, who was fantastic, touch on him here in a moment, uh, ended up winning a much-needed win against the Indiana Pacers uh, in a absolute shootout type of game. Uh, giving up 145 points is ridiculous. I know we scored 150, but still, you can't be giving up 145 points uh, and expect to win very many of those games. Lakers right now just basically trying to outscore teams. Basically, there is zero defensive identity. Uh, but again, Spencer Dinwiddie was fantastic in that game, getting the opportunity to play on ball, make plays, as well as be aggressive. Uh, it's something that I've talked about heavily and have really tried to highlight uh, the the need for Spencer Dinwiddie to be more aggressive, to be more on ball, to be able to make plays, uh, you know, slot Austin Reeves. Instead of having Austin Reeves be the primary playmaker and, you know, have to try to juggle and navigate being on ball and off ball, no, just let him play the two guard, let him be aggressive, let him be a scorer, which is what he's best at, and then allow Spencer Dinwiddie to play on ball and make plays for himself and others. Right? Let him be the playmaker that finds Austin Reeves and finds the cutter and runs the actions and gets the guys into their sets. That's what I want to see more of. And I just think everything I've talked about, everything that I keep highlighting, has just getting more and more validated by what Spencer Dinwiddie uh, has been able to do. And I hope that that continues. I hope that uh, Darvin Ham sees that and goes, okay, well, we need to make that happen. Uh, so a couple things that I want to dive into, though, in this video uh, first off, Mike Trudell gave us a little breakdown of the different scenarios in which the Lakers need to handle business. So if the Lakers in their next 11 games go 9-2, and two, then Phoenix 6-5, six and five, Dallas 6-6, six and six, Sacramento 6-6, six and six, uh, the Lakers would overtake. Um, and uh, not saying that they all have to do that, but any one of them, because again, the Lakers are trying to get into that 7th or 8th. So if Phoenix goes six and five, Dallas goes six and six, or Sacramento goes six and six. Then the Lakers would overtake one of those teams, uh, and then you look at uh, if Lakers go eight and three, which is what I have them slated at. I said that I thought they'd go ten and three in their thirteen games. Um, nine and two would be great, but I think to eight and three is kind of the more realistic scenario, in my opinion. You need Phoenix to either go five and six, Dallas to go five and seven. Sacramento to go five and seven for the Lakers to overtake them. Lakers seven and four. Phoenix would have to go four and seven. Dallas four and eight. Sacramento four and eight. And then six and five, which at that point, I just I think Lakers have no shot. Um three and eight, three and nine, three and nine from Phoenix, Dallas, Sacramento. I think if they can go, if they go nine and two, I think one of those teams basically goes five hundred the rest of the way. Uh Phoenix has a ridiculous schedule. Um, so I could definitely see Phoenix losing a game or two um, or going 500 the rest of the way. Uh, Dallas, they, they've they kind of been hot and cold. Same thing with Sacramento. So I think 9-2 and two would be perfect. 8-3 and three I think is the most realistic. Uh, and then we're looking for Phoenix, Dallas, or Sacramento to basically lose uh, one, basically go one or two games under 500 for the Lakers to squeeze in. Another big thing. Uh, LeBron James is, li is listed as doubtful in the game against the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, now, the Lakers do play a back-to-back. -back. They play against the Milwaukee Bucks. Then they follow that up against the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, the Lakers' logic this season has been basically rest LeBron against the good team that could beat you even if LeBron plays. And then if you beat them, then great. Then you're probably going 2-0 in that stretch. But... If you lose to that team, then LeBron comes back against the team that is bad that you should beat, and you end up beating them. And that's been the case pretty much every time except for once. Um, and that was the time Anthony Davis did it play. But for the most part, um, that's kind of the, the motto that the Lakers have been sticking with, and it's been to some success. I get it. I understand that thinking. I understand the idea. Um, you know, is it is it something that is the best course of action? I mean, that, that's always up for debate, up for interpretation. You can make the argument, play him against the good team. If you beat the good team, right, you don't need LeBron as much against the bad team. But to me, I think, like, the Lakers basically doing everything they can to secure the game that should be a win and making sure that you don't accidentally lose that game. Because just as much, right, you could, you could play LeBron against Milwaukee, lose to Milwaukee, 
then you have to rest LeBron against Memphis or you have to play him in the back-to-back. I, I do understand and, and I'm okay with the approach that the Lakers have taken this year. Also worth noting, the Lakers, last time they played the Milwaukee Bucks, was in L.A. in a win. That was the game D'Lo just went mad. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie had the game-saving block on Damian Lillard. D'Lo hit the big game-winning shot. Uh, that was the game that LeBron didn't play. Milwaukee ended up coming in L.A. Lakers handled business without LeBron James and uh, were able to secure and get a win. Can the Lakers do it again, though? That's a big problem. That's a big question. Can they? Sure, of course. Will they? I don't know. Um, You know, look, I've said this countless times. We are not better without LeBron James, but we can supplement for a game or two. Uh, Lakers also got their first win without D'Angelo Russell. Lakers were 0 and 4, I believe, up until uh last uh, the other night when D'Lo uh, didn't play and the Lakers ended up pulling away the win. A lot of that again is because of Spencer Dinwiddie and his ability to fill in that role, uh the D'Lo role as the playmaker and scorer. Um he could do that again, right? Without LeBron, put him on, you, I mean you could I would put him in the starting unit and reward him for his performance in the in the previous game against the Indiana Pacers. And just basically tell him, like, hey, look, like, you get to be the, the three, put him on Damian Lillard, right, and kind of match up that way. That would be my approach. That would be my thoughts on that. Uh, and, you know, I, look, we, we're going to need D'Lo back for, for Milwaukee. I If we don't have LeBron and we don't have D'Lo, that I don't think we, we it goes well. I don't think we win that game in that way. Uh, just because D'Lo, D'Lo's a guy, even if he doesn't go off for 40, right? Like, he's a guy that can still go get you 20 and, and drop 10 assists. And when he gets to play, when LeBron doesn't play, he gets to play playmaker more. He gets to be on ball more. He gets to do more things. So ideally, you put him in that situation. You put him more on ball, and you let him kind of run the show and cook. Uh, you could even do the same thing with Spencer Dinwiddie a little bit with D'Lo's ability to play off ball and hit shots. I, like, I just think that you run various looks, various actions between D'Lo and Spencer Dinwiddie. I think that that's the best approach. I think you could be aggressive, especially with Milwaukee. They don't really have great defensive guards. I, I mean, they're, you talk about their guards are uh, Malik Beasley and Damian Lillard. We should be able to torch those guys. We should be able to score at will uh, with D'Lo, Reeves, Spencer, um, even guys like Max Christie and... You know, Cam Reddish and Torian Prince. We need to take advantages of our mismatches. We'll see what happens with Giannis. Uh, He's kind of been dealing with things recently. So hopefully, um, you know, if LeBron doesn't play, maybe Giannis doesn't play. That would be good. Although, we might be better off with Giannis playing because the the Bucs have actually been pretty good without Giannis. Um and actually have a winning record without him. So it's just, that's something to keep in mind. But again, say it all the time. Play the right way. Move the ball. Share the basketball. Take care of the basketball. Don't turn it over. Hit shots. Play some defense. Get get a couple key stops. You can win the game. All right? We can do it again. Did it once. It was a tight game. Don't get me wrong. Took a couple uh, tough plays down the stretch. But hey, we hit the big shot when we needed to. And we got the big stop when we needed to. And that was thanks to D'Lo and Spencer. Put D'Lo and Spencer in there against the uh, Milwaukee Bucks again and let those two do it again. Let those two run your offense, run the show, put yourself in the best position to go get some Ws. You know, guys are going to step up. Rui Achimura, 90% of the time when LeBron doesn't play, Rui is spectacular. Why? Because he gets to play the four. He gets slot up and line up as the four, and that is his best position. And on top of that, he rebounds better. He, he he will draw out Giannis and make them have to kind of adjust. Like, and he's got the strength to kind of bang down low with those guys. Like, I like it. I like the matchup. I do think the Lakers, even without LeBron, can sit and rest and can get it done. Um, real question is just will they? I do have them slated to lose this game. The three games that I thought that the Lakers would lose was the the Milwaukee Bucks the second Indiana Pacers game, and then one of the Minnesota or Cleveland games. But the Lakers are on a six-game road trip. You got to, you have to go uh, forward to, 
on, on this trip, in my opinion. You, you can't lose more than two games on this trip. Otherwise, you're in big trouble. Right? Go four and two on this trip. Walk out of there with these wins. And let's go. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Think the Lakers get it done? Do you think they don't? Do you have your concerns? Do you not? Uh, what do you think about LeBron playing? Do you think that they should play LeBron? Do you think that they shouldn't? Do you think that they should play him in the Milwaukee game, but rest him in the Minnesota game or the Memphis game? Again, how do you feel? What your thoughts are? Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.